Hello, I'm Professor Alice Roberts. Welcome to Lockdown Anatomy. Welcome back if you've already looked at some of the earlier videos where I looked at the anatomy around the shoulder and the arm. Now we're moving on to the forearm muscles and looking at the muscles in this anterior compartment of the forearm, in the front of the forearm here. They're all flexors, they're flexors of the, of the wrist and the fingers and we'll look at each of those muscles and what the actions are. Once again, I'm using the fantastic 3D4 Medical Complete Anatomy app to let you see this anatomy in 3D. Many of the muscles that we'll focus on this time attach from a particular little bony knobble just above your elbow. And you might remember these from previous videos. So there's the lateral and the medial epicondyle. It's the medial one that we'll look at in more detail today. That's where a lot of these flexor muscles originate. It's called the common flexor origin. Let's have a little bit of a closer look at the elbow itself though, how these bones join together, how they articulate. There's that little rounded capitulum at the bottom of the humerus and next to it, the pulley shaped or diabolo shaped trochlea. And if we look at the way those articulate with the bones of the forearm, the capitulum articulates with the head of the radius, while the trochlea articulates with that notch, the trochlea notch at the top of the ulna. Now that joint between the humerus and the ulna is a simple hinge joint, whereas the joint between the capitulum and the radial head, it's like a small ball and socket joint. So as well as the radial head being able to move in a hinge-like motion, it can also rotate. Now that brings us on to another joint around the elbow. It is contained within the same synovial capsule and this is the proximal radio ulna joint. So this is where the radial head spins around against the side of the ulna. If there's a proximal radio ulna joint, well you can bet there's going to be a distal one as well. As we move down towards the hand, we find that the two forearm bones articulate at the distal radial ulna joint down there. So the radius can spin around the ulna in the movement that we know as pronation and supination. As well as those synovial joints at the proximal and distal end between the radius and ulna, there's also an interosseous membrane uniting the bones along their length. Interosseous simply means between the bones. And this membrane is like a long flat ligament between the radius and the ulna. Now let's add on some muscles and look at those. Up the top there we can see the biceps tendon and it's aponeurosis. That's like a flat sheet of tendon wrapping over the top of the forearm muscles. So we'll get rid of that so we can see the muscles underneath it. We'll also get rid of this other, for now, extraneous muscle, brachioradialis. Now we can see that superficial group of forearm flexors really well, attaching from that medial epicondyle, which is the common flexor origin at the bottom of the humerus. The first one we'll look at is pronator teres. So this one is attaching from that common flexor origin and sweeping across to insert onto the radius. Now we've isolated it, we can see it better. And if we turn that round, we can see that in fact it's got another head which attaches from the ulna. So it has a superficial head from the humerus and a deep head from the ulna. And there's its movement. It pronates the forearm. It brings the radius over the ulna, bringing your hand to lie palm down. Let's put the other muscles back and we'll look at the next one, which is flexor carpi radialis. There we go, we'll highlight it and isolate it. And you can see that again, it's stretching from above the elbow down into the hand and it attaches to the bases of the second and third metacarpals. Its name, flexor carpi radialis, means the flexor of the wrist on the radial side. And there it is at work, glowing as it contracts to flex the wrist. And it can do something else to the wrist as well. It can pull the hand face outwards, that's called abduction. So flexor carpi radialis is a flexor and an abductor of the wrist. The next muscle we come to is palmaris longus, a skinny muscle with a long thin tendon running down into the palma aponeurosis in the hand. It's absent in between 3 and 15% of the population. 
depending on which population you're looking at. The next muscle we're going to look at is a fairly chunky muscle that has four tendons. It's flexor digitorum superficialis, and you can see its tendons there running into the hand and all the way down to the fingers where the tendons split to insert onto the middle phalanx of each finger. So these tendons are going to work to flex the fingers and there they are in action, glowing yellow as the muscle belly contracts up in the forearm and pulls on those four long tendons. Let's come to the final muscle in this superficial group now and it is flexor carpi ulnaris, so the flexor of the wrist on the ulna side. Its proximal attachment or origin is from the flexor origin on the humerus but also from the ulna and then it reaches down to insert onto that pisiform bone, the little p-shaped bone in your hand and as its name suggests it is a flexor of that wrist joint. Because of its position though it can also move the wrist in another way, it can adduct the hand at the wrist. So there it is with the tendon pulling up on the pisiform bone and adducting the wrist. Now I'm going to take away all of those five superficial forearm flexors and what we'll see is that there's a deep group and there's just three muscles you'll be relieved to hear in this deep group. The first one we'll look at is a rather beautiful muscle called flexor pollicis longus. The muscle belly and the way it attaches to the tendon looks like a quill pen I always think and that tendon runs all the way down to the distal phalanx, the last bone of the thumb and there it is flexing that thumb. The next muscle is the bulkiest muscle in the forearm, flexor digitorum profundus, the deep digital flexor. Once again, this flows down into the hand and divides into four tendons, this time going all the way to insert on the distal phalanx of each finger. And there it is in action, flexing the fingers, working specifically on the distal interphalangeal joint, but it's also going to flex all the other joints that it passes in front of as well. Finally then, if we take away flexor digitorum profundus and flexor pollicis longus, we can see this square muscle and it's called pronator quadratus, attaching from the ulna across to the radius. And as you can probably guess from its name, it pronates the radius over the ulna, that twisting movement again. It's working in cahoots with that pronator teres up the top of the forearm. Now let's put all those muscles back on the deep group and the superficial group and we've now covered eight forearm muscles, all of the muscles in the anterior compartment. It's time for a bit of surface anatomy because you can identify some of these muscles and tendons in yourself. Look down towards your wrist here. There's a tendon that's coming down. It's passing into the palm to insert onto the bases of the second and the third metacarpals that must be flexor carpi radialis. Next to it, you can see a skinny little tendon. Yes, that's palmaris longus. You can ping it a bit. It doesn't do much, it improves your grip, but surgeons can also use it as a bit of a spare part as well. Alongside that, as we move towards the ulnar side of the hand, are the tendons of flexor digitorum superficialis. If you flex your fingers, and just push in here at your wrist, you can feel those tendons moving under the surface. Right over the ulna side, you should be able to feel the tendon of flexor carpi ulnaris. Try adducting your wrist like I'm doing to make that tendon work and then you can feel it under the skin. That's the tendon that, if you remember, runs down into your hand and attaches to the pisiform bone, which itself is then connected to the fifth metacarpal and the hamate bone by ligaments. So that's a nice bit of surface anatomy. Thanks for watching. Next time I'll move on to the, the back of the forearm, the posterior compartment and look at some of the extents of the muscles in there. And then finally we'll get into the hand and the fingers too. Here's flexor carpi ulnaris helping me to say goodbye. See you soon.